Hello everyone, this is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And this is the first of a mini-series uh, based around Cube. And uh, there's this awesome event happening over on one of the Facebook groups. There's a Facebook group that's been created uh, specifically for Cube. And uh, I noticed that there was a virtual draft being trialed uh, as an event. And it's actually happening tomorrow. So this is the 25th of June, the day before we start this draft online. And then we're going to be having a league where we basically do a round robin against each other from my understanding of uh, four to six players. You can see there's people who have signed up. I'm one of the six people trying to trial this because I love Cube. It's my favorite format to play in for Pokemon. It's very creative, fun, interesting, and unique. And um, I really want to be at the grassroots of this level because I think it's really awesome to um, get this going because if drafting online can be a thing that's fluid and we can make it work, it could be a great way for me to cube more often. And I love doing that. So um, Sam Gustafsson, he is the awesome brain behind this little draft. Um, he has said down here that it's going to be a draft between four and six players. I think we have got six. It might be five of us, though. Drafting 60-card decks, and uh, we're going to be playing on TCG1, for those of you who remember that. Um, and uh, it's going to be drafting tomorrow evening. Late for me, but I don't mind. It's uh, like 4 a.m. in the morning for me to start drafting this. So I'm hoping that if I can sort things out in my brain now, I can have a good uh, sort of mentality going into the draft tomorrow. So... Um, we are going to be, uh, yeah, drafting from his, uh, 480 card cube, which is actually linked down here as well. So in this video, I'm going to be evaluating his cube, talking about the drafting process and how it's going to influence what I pick to draft. Because although there are a few videos out there right now, uh, based on cubing, there's not too much on the mentality of the drafting process itself and how it can change the deck that you come up with. Because... I want to represent, I want to do well, I'm going to be showing off videos of my cube games. So I really want to um, make sure that my draft is as strong as it could be to give myself the best chance of winning the most games. So he's done an excellent job, honestly. Sam's work on this is amazing. Um, you can see he has given his full breakdown of the cube and we can literally look at every single card in this cube. So one really interesting thing that you can have with cubes is that pre, you know, pre-draft experience is very different for people. Sometimes you can be going into a cube, not knowing what lines are in there whatsoever, and it's completely blind, and you just start picking cards that you think are good along the way, and then you realize that one of these evolution lines has some busted stage two stuff going on, or there's an amount of support that makes one of the cards he's ignored earlier uh, look really good. So I want to leave no stone unturned. I want the full information available to me to make sure... Uh, everything is great and uh, Sam has been at work busy you can see he's even on the sheet right now um, he's done really awesome graphics and giving us a full breakdown of the cube so we can look at exactly what his mentality and thought process is around these types and I can also pinpoint some strengths some weaknesses of some of these archetypes and talk about the ones that going into the draft I'm going to have my eye out for for things that I definitely want to pick up if they do come up ones that I'm happy to ignore and basically if I am going down certain directions, if I'm looking to go, for, like if I get offered stuff for spread, what cards I want to try and keep an eye out for. If I get offered energy acceleration, I definitely want to go down certain avenues, look for some big basics and stuff like that. So I can start capitalizing on those things. So I think it's really interesting to look at someone's cube, analyze it. As someone who's played a lot of different cubes, uh, I know how different things can be stronger and weaker uh, based on what's in the cube and based on how we actually draft. Uh, it's uh, each of us, if there's six of us drafting, we're each going to be drafting 80 cards, and it's 10 card packs. That's also really important to note because um, it'll let me have some insight into what cards I can and can't pass up to the other people in the draft. There are cards that I think I can get away with going round, and there are cards that I just have to take on the spot. For example, there's powerful supporter cards, six people, people will take them. Stage two lines, those are things that we've got to take. So these are all things to consider before the draft even begins to give myself the best chance. I'm going to be tryharding right now. And uh, yeah, let's have a look in a bit more detail about Sam's Cube, the one that I'm going to be uh, partaking in uh, in this little tournament. So <clears throat> you can see he's got a summary of all the types he's going for here. So Grass is Status Conditions slash Trapping. Uh, that is an Ariado Stage 1 line and a Victory Bell Stage 2. 
Uh, you can see for fire, he has burn and energy acceleration as his little theme. Uh, there's a Salazzle as the stage one line and Infernape as the stage two line. For water, snipe slash spread damage is the theme. Uh, so you can see there's a Stami in here as well as Greninja as his stage two line. For lightning, energy manipulation and big knockouts is what he's looking for. With Electrode as his stage one and Magnazone as his stage two line. For psychic, damage, counter manipulation slash weird stuff going on. Uh, and he has Trev and Chandelure going on in here for fighting damage boosting and combat specialists uh so he has lucario and a machamp stage two line for dark uh he doesn't have uh much of a summary going on here just some question marks but it looks like zoroark is the stage one and hydrogen is the stage two so definitely some shenanigans at play here and for metal shield effects and damage reduction is the theme so a bronze on stage one line and an Aegis Thash Stage 2 line. Uh, there's also Evolutions in this cube. There's an Eevee, and you can see he's got six of the Evolutions in play here um, as options. So he's done a really nice job aesthetically for making this look absolutely phenomenal. But let's dive into um, a little bit more detail about the cube now, and I'll be highlighting some cards that I think are very strong and very weak. He has done also a picture album on Imja um, to make this all... A lot easier for me because I mean I can uh, I can look at the cards in detail and like click on them uh, and it does give the breakdown of the cards here. Uh, but for you guys watching, I think it'll be better if we go through um, these individual images. He's got the IRL cube there in the exact same um, container that I'm using, so he's clearly a man of culture. The Dex Protection Supreme Game Chest is awesome uh, for cubes of this size. He is playing a 480 size cube. Mine's 624. Um, it's a tight squeeze to get 720 in here, but you can do it if you take out these boxes and have them as like extra compartments. It can work out. So let's start off with his grass support. This is a little bit too big. Can I make it smaller in any way? Yeah, this should be fine. Hopefully you guys can see all this. Um, might have to make it a little bit smaller. Okay. So he's kind of broken. Oh my God, that didn't work, did it? He's kind of broken these things down into different types, including some like specific type um, like synergy basics. So he has some non-evolving basics in here. I think it was 69 non-evolving basics. Yeah, 69. But some of them are broken down into types here, uh, as you can see. So he's kind of already like shoehorned some stuff together. But from what I can see from, the, from his grass stuff, I think really the only victory bell that I want to look at picking up is the inviting trap victory bell. It can do a coin flip for gust effects and his cube is very light on gust. So the only way in hell that I am drafting anything to do with victory bell is if I see exactly this gusting victory bell and I'm also not having any other stage twos. He has a evolution line of eight basics, six stage ones and four stage twos. So if I want to make any evolution line work, as long as I get the top end, I will always get the bottom end. Um, when there's only six of us in 10 card packs, there'll definitely be bell sprouts and weeping bells or whatever else getting passed around plentiful. So especially if I want something like Victory Bell, which isn't like a build around card, I just want a stage two that can give me gust. Uh, I could easily draft like a 1-1-1 one, one, one line and get that going. So if I ever see this Victory Bell, I may have to deny it from other people. Um, but I may also have to take it myself. As for the other Victory Bells, they have a lot of like status condition things, but I don't think their raw damage output ne is necessarily high, and their attack costs all are also pretty big. So unless I was to be like lucky and draft a bunch of DCs, I don't think a Victory Bell as an attacking presence is good enough, so I would only really keep an eye out for this Victory Bell. In terms of Ariados, uh, they once again have lots of synergies with status conditions, so you can see why he's trying to uh, like merge these two together as a kind of type. Maybe they synergize well together. Also, Ariados could synergize with maybe like the Salazzle line, because uh, that's also a good thing that can induce status conditions. Um, but again, nothing too inspiring for Ariados. I think I'll most likely be ignoring Ariados, possibly having the Poisonous Nest Ariados in the deck just for damage modifying. Um, but there are some important basics here. Tropius is an amazing basic. Its return attack can do 10 and draw you up to 6 cards. So for consistency early game, that's awesome. Energy press is just a good attack as well for early game pressure. And um, also, like, if your opponent's trying to build up big attackers, 
uh, you can definitely punish them with a basic. And I think from what I can see so far in Sam's Cube, the basics are definitely going to be the key here. I think I'll be drafting thin lines of stage twos, possibly uh, thick stage one lines if they're good enough stage ones. But I think I'll be taking a lot of basics and trying to recycle the basics a lot because he's got a lot of powerful basics in his cube. And I'm going to try and abuse that because it's really, really easy to just, just draft one Atropius rather than have the headache of trying to do three individual drafts of evolution lines because then I can focus on better items and supporters and whatnot. So Tropius definitely one I'm keeping my eye out for. Kartana, big cut is good on exactly one turn, but it does have free retreat. Shaman is a good um, setup card with flippity flap whilst also having a revenge style attack. And 120 seems like a good bar for revenge style attacks. So that's a pretty good one. Two of the Carnivines, they're both dragging things up. I don't think I necessarily need any of these unless I'm going to be some sort of like trapping deck, but I don't really feel like I will be doing that. Verizion um, can do some decent damage if I think if you're ahead on if you're behind on prizes I think you do 120 which again is reasonable but this Heracross this Heracross is nuts um, I may be like I'm even having in the back of my mind that I want to be like a colorless um, like basic toolbox um, with just some like tech stage ones oh, sorry it's tech stage twos and Heracross and there's also a mill tank in his in his draft. Uh, which are two cards that make me want to just have like a tech stage two somewhere in the deck and then Heracross using powerful friends. Uh, it does 30 plus 90 more if you have a stage two in play. So 120 on a basic with 120 hit points is so, so insane. I'm going to pick up Heracross basically as soon as I see it. I think if ever it gets passed to me, I'm just taking him. Same for Miltank, powerful friends, just doing 80 for one. It's too damn efficient on a non-GX. It's just a lot of pressure 100 hit points is big. You're basically doing the same tank ability as a stage 2 with 120 base hit points. Um, so I think he is definitely worth picking up. For the support, I don't think I care about Forest. Uh, Netball is kind of reasonable if I'm going to be trying to draft like Heracross and just need like a couple of grass energies in here. Gardenia is genuinely a very, very strong supporter in draft. Um, I think I would only draft it if I got Heracross or like Tropius or something like that. Um, but yeah, for the grass stuff, I'm overall not too impressed. I'll be basically ignoring most of the grass stuff. The Heracross and the Tropius being the two big outliers. Also, Rally Back Shaman's good. And the Gusting Victory Bell, I'll keep my eye on. For fire stuff, I'm really uh, accustomed to Infernape. It's in my draft, uh, in my current cube. So um, I know the power level of Infernape pretty nicely. These two Infernapes here, the Fighting and Fire ones, I like that they're two individual types. Uh, but it's also awkward that they have different attack costs. So one thing to bear in mind is this Fernape could be if I was trying to draft some sort of rush fighting deck. Because uh, for two, well, a fighting colorless, you do 50 and burn. But the burn is 60 based on Infernape's ability. So effectively, you do 110 for two uh, with no drawback. And if they stay burned, uh, they're dead. So, I mean, these two are like flagship attackers for Infernape. I think these would be the... Two that I'd be most keeping my out my eye out for. These ones I'm not too fussed about. Salazzle is a really, really good stage one line in his cube. Really, really good. One thing I noticed from Sam's cube is he doesn't have much Pokemon based draw. Very, very few of his evolution lines incorporate draw in themselves. So this Salazzle can just make me draw so many more cards than my all of my opponents, no matter what they're playing. This is the single best uh, draw engine in the entire cube. If I can get my hands on Roast Reveal, I take it immediately. It's a snap pick. As soon as you take that, even if I'm not running like fire, I'll just run colorless stuff and have Salazzle as a draw engine or have like a mix of energy cards because Salazzle is so insane as a draw option. In fact, all of the Salazzles are pretty reasonable. Um, I think these two Salazzles attack for reasonable damage for low energy commitments. So I think if I get if I start seeing a good amount of Salazzles, I don't mind going for a fairly thick Salazzle line with like fire basics and then a handful of like other basics. So I really have my eye on uh, my eye on Roast Reveal. That's an immediate pick. As soon as I see it, I take that immediately. Um, but outside of that, like the Infernape, I can sort of live without. Uh, these ones are the flagship ones. So if they do come up, I'll take them. But definitely Roast Reveal. And I'm not going to sleep on these ones either. They seem pretty reasonable. For the basics, uh, this Volcanion is so far above the power level, it's unreal. Uh, power Heater doing 30 base for one with 130 hit points is already good. And it has extra energy acceleration. So if I am some sort of big basics thing um, with like Salazzle and Volt, because like the only elements of fire in the entire deck, it'll still be nuts. And 100 for three fire is still like 
keeping pace with everything. So that card's insane. The Reshiram is pretty good if I have enough energy acceleration. Uh, the Moltres is also pretty reasonable. It can do 30 and it can attach a fire from hand. Uh, so that's pretty reasonable. I think the rest aren't that impressive. One, ones that I can like pretty much ignore. Entei can do good numbers if your opponent fills the bench. But essentially what I'm telling you is fire draws the most cards. So if I can get this Scorched Earth Salazzle, I'm just going to outdraw any other deck in the cube. Um, so those are ones to keep my eye on. The Volk and the Moltres and the Reshiram, these three are very powerful big basics that I would also be building around if I started to see them. Obviously, bear in mind that Blacksmith is like a huge power spike turn. Uh, getting one of these basic attackers going out of nowhere is just nuts. So uh, I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for the fire stuff. Uh, just a few key pieces, but definitely ones that I want to bear in mind. Greninja is an interesting one, and all the water stuff's interesting, to be honest. Um, the Greninja has the bragging right of water dupes. Water dupes is an amazing thing that could try and make you swarm Greninjas, in theory. Um, they have some pretty reasonable synergy. Uh, the Aqua Shower Greninja is probably like the flagship one. Greninja is an interesting one. It feels like you need to draft like all or none of them. So you would really have to go down a corridor. If you want to go Greninja, you have to dry up. You have to like pick as much Greninja as possible and you need to get water dupes. Otherwise your draft's not going to work. So uh, I'm pretty sure I won't be picking Greninja. Um, but if you do draft it, I see what's going on here. Aqua Shower is Tapu Koko basically. Water Shuriken giving you extra sniping on top of that can be really dirty actually. I think if people do get this dupes combo off, it will be dangerous. Shadow Stitching and Moonlight Slash are both powerful attacks as well. One for 80 is just damn efficient and it has free retreat. All of these guys with a low retreat cost seem very good. Bring Down, probably not the best. I think you could just ignore this Greninja altogether and just try and draft these three and try and get a thick Greninja line to get Water Dupes off a bunch. But I think you need to draft like all three of these Greninjas for the draft to be strong for you. Otherwise, you're just going to fizzle. Um, for Starmies, the two, the Escape Starmie and the Deep Sea Swell Starmie are infant, like definite, just ignore those, they won't be useful. But these two Starmies are super good, so Space Beacon and Strange Wave, Starmie being able to pull out water and psychic energies from your deck, uh, pull out three is immense energy acceleration, and it has free retreat as well, and does 40 for one, like everything is good about this Starmie, and Space Beacon is clearly insane uh it would be amazing if i had salazzle it would be amazing if i had any sort of energy accelerator like magnazone in his draft which we'll talk about in a bit so um when i'm talking about these stage ones it's kind of like the star use and the Sal salandits these are like cards that i'll be picking up I'll, I'll sort of like let them pass the first time around um but if there's nothing else good in that pack of like uh four cards left I'll definitely be keeping my eye on Staryu's and um, and Salandits. Try and pick them up just so that if ever these good Starmies and Salazzles come my way, I can just instantly pick them and it's not a problem. So just making the mental note now that Staryu's and Salandits are probably like good basics just to pick up if I randomly see them uh, throughout the draft. So these Starmies will definitely be amazing. This Starmie gets absolutely incredible if you draft Lightning. Like it just becomes unreal. Um, for Water Basics, there's some really powerful stuff here. Keldeo's really strong. Uh, Lapras has good spread synergy. Uh, this Kiram is, again, super above the curve. Doing a 30-30 snipe for two energy is filth uh, in cube, especially when there's the lack of draw that there is in this cube specifically. Um, Frostbear is absolutely nuts. It's, it, it's really, really big. And even Blizzard Burn can take one shot, so... This card is on a ridiculous power level. Articuno, if you're doing some like spread shenanigans, you can um, try and use Tri-Edge for like some cheeky prizes, but I think it'll probably be too expensive. So I think really it's like the Lapras, Keldeo, and Kiram are the pretty much star players in the water decks. If uh, if you see that white, if I see that uh, Plasma Kiram, I might have to deny it from people just because it's too strong to let anyone have this. Um, and if I get to use it, that's amazing. Uh, the Archies is 100% a bait. That's just ignored. Brooklet Hill, good for potentially your fighting stuff and the water stuff. Um, and Dive Ball, just a strong card, especially if you get like any of the Starmie line and stuff. So, And Splash Energy is actually super nuts as well. If you can Splash Energy this Greninja exactly, um, it just lets you spread a bunch. And if you keep this one on the bench the entire time, just doing extra water shurikens, I can see that getting out of hand. So... I think if I randomly see these two Greninjas not getting picked up, I just build around. Uh, but otherwise, I basically ignore water outside of the Starmies and the, the Kiram, basically. So here's the Lightning stuff. And I think the Lightning stuff is his strongest stuff in the cube. Uh, he has two um, Rain Dance Magna Zones. Not one, two copies. So you have a really, really high chance of getting 
well, you don't have a really high chance of getting, but you have like a higher chance than most to make sure that your strategy pays off. So if I start picking up Magnemites and Magnetons, uh, it wouldn't be too unrealistic for me to get one of these Rain Dancers. And Rain Dance is super busted. Super busted. I've never had Rain Dance in my cubes outside of Porygon Z, which is for special energies only. And I only have like 20 special energies in the cube, so it's limited to the amount of value that they can get. But Rain Dance, let me tell you, is the most busted, stupid thing in cube. Um, especially with a Starmie in the draft. And also there's like stuff like Fisherman. Because Rain Dance just lets you retreat around your guys painlessly and reattach to new attackers painlessly. So colorless attackers, like colorless basics, and like some of the basics he has in the Lightning Pool are so insane that Magnazone is like, if ever I see one of these, I build around him instantly. Like if I just see one of these two... I'm just building Rain Dance and I don't even care. I'll, I'll build Rain Dance Big Basics, like, happily, because it's just super strong. Uh, Dual Brains is actually really nice as well. Um, not for the ability necessarily, although that can help you with, like, some teething turns when you don't have much going on. Uh, Jaro Ball is really strong. Doing AT and forcing both people to switch is really good because um, you can try and have some pivot Pokemon that's annoying for them to deal with and you force them to move all the time. And if they're not playing Rain Dance, uh, making them move out of attackers can make them lose attachments for retreating and stuff. So overall, these two Magnazones, high priority targets. If I see those, you've got to pick them. got to deny other people uh, if I can't draft them myself. These Electrodes aren't all that great. Uh, this can do 60 for one and has free retreat, which is, I guess, a little bit notable. It can be a nice early pressure Pokemon. It's actually similar to like a Domfam Prime, surprisingly. So this is surprisingly strong. Magnetic Draw, I think I would pick it up if I could. So Voltorb again is one of these stage ones that I'll randomly just be drafting. You'll probably see me throughout the draft. I'm going to record myself draft. Um, I'll pick up Voltorb just with the intention of maybe picking up one of these electrodes, possibly. Uh, Magnetic Draw is a lot weaker than Salazzle, but it's one of the only other Pokemon that can draw us cards. It's like Salazzle, this, Chandelure, and like Instructor Rangaroo. There really aren't many things that can draw us cards, so that electrode will get snapped up if we're able to. Uh, this Electrode's really, really bad. It's like a Scramble Switch, but in a Stage 1. And this Electrode is surprisingly reasonable, um, but I think I would only... Like, if I'm... I'm not drafting Electrode for this, so I'd be surprised if I take this ever. Uh, for the basics, Tapu Koko is super nuts. Uh, Flying Flip is amazing. If you're trying to draft Greninja, if you're trying to draft any other spread thing, it's really insane. And obviously Electric Ball, if I'm playing Magnazone, is amazing. It's a free retreat. 100 damage like poking thing which is insane raikou is a crazy good beat stick crazy crazy good beat stick like this is probably one of the strongest cards it's a 140 hit point basic essentially um to like so he's not getting one shot and thunder lance is just um like there's no reason why you wouldn't just spam this uh, so absolutely nuts. Uh, Zero Aura has silly damage cap as well. So it's like if I draft one of these Magnazones, I know that these basics will just start like coming to me and they're all amazing. Like I'd pick both of these Raikus. I'd pick Zero Aura. I'd pick Coco. I'd pick Zekrom. I'd pick Stunfisk as well as a revenge attacker. I'd even pick Zerkatry. Like I'd pick all of these if I had Rain Dance in the deck. So like, yeah, Lightning is insane. I think I'd be, I'm just going to be picking up these Lightning basics like if I see them. Um, as soon as I see one of these, like, just, just way too insane. Aether Paradise is insane. Rough Seas is insane as well. I think Rough Seas is in the water one. Oh, no, it's Brooklyn Hill. Um, but yeah, is there Rough Seas in here? Let me check. I just gotta check the neutral stadiums. Yeah, Rough Seas is in here as well as Aether Paradise. So you naturally have the potential to just beat, like, the Greninja healing, Greninja spread decks and stuff. So, um, that's just intense. And, like, Raikou with a minus 20 plus, uh, Aether Paradise or Rough Seas is just filth. Like, if you get three turns of this, you just instantly win that game. So, uh, I think Rain Dance is super, super crazy. Like, the Vulcan of the E-Power, like, I don't care too much about these. don't even really care about the um, Flash Energy. I don't, because, like, these won't be in the line of fire, and the fighting deck seems slow. It's Lucario and Machamp, which has no energy acceleration. So, I think, like, our fighting weakness is probably, like, the best weakness to have, because I think fighting is, like, quite low on the power scale of things. So... Um, Magnazone probably the strongest stage 2 in his draft, like, by far, and I'll try and build around that if I can. The Psychic stuff's also really cool. Um, I can see myself picking up exactly this Chandelure. Um, Curse Shadow, if I'm able to pick up a Floatstone, or if I can get it in combination with Mystery Energy, is insane. It's three counters anywhere you want, um, every turn, like, between turns if stuff's getting knocked out and whatnot, which is amazing. If you are playing, like, a pure Psychic attacking deck, 
Um, the Eerie Glows a good attack as well. Confusion and Burn, so it's 70, uh, which is pretty nice. And you're getting extra counters on top, so it's like 100 damage in a turn, which really isn't bad. And if they're confused and have to retreat, you get extra counters on top of that as well. Chandelure's ability draws us cards. It's Acrobike in an ability, so keep an eye out for that. I think I will be picking up Litwicks and Lampants early, um, just to try and flesh out that line if I'm able to. Um, this Chandler is also very good. So if I can, if Chandlers are just being passed, you notice in like the first one or two packs, if like the Lampants and Litwicks come to you towards the late game, um, you can you can definitely start drafting a thick Chandler. I'd ignore Shady Move. I don't think it's strong enough, but um, these three Chandlers are all very strong. Uh, for Trev, this one's a complete bait. This one's pretty bad. This one would be annoying for me because I'm going to be drafting a bunch of big basics, uh, but I think it's weak in a vacuum. And this Trevenant is super insane. Even though uh, trainers aren't like that... Well, items aren't like that mandatory in cube, and a lot of the time it's fleshed out with just more Pokemon and more energies and whatnot. Uh, Tree Slam is nuts. 60-20-20 is so insane, especially if you combine it with like either of these two chandeliers. So um, if I draft candles, I'll try and pick up this guy, but I imagine this will get taken like immediately by anyone anyway. The Psychic stuff's pretty good. This guy is more spread shenanigans. Um, Copycat's obviously a powerful attack. Giratina, I think is a bit of a bait. There's not too much. I would only take the Giratina um, <clears throat> if I was uh, uh, getting the Starmie, uh, the Strange Wave Starmie. Uh, otherwise, he's pretty bad. Latios is pretty reasonable. This Tapu Lele is super insane. When there's not much gust, Magical Swap is like a win condition for you. Uh, Shining Jirachi is also pretty good. Uh, you like spend a turn, but if people have rare candied and stuff, you can super punish them. Boba Fett, I think, is a bit of a trap. But yeah, uh, the D Valley is insane. Treasure is obviously always insane. So yeah, Candles, I like. I really like drafting this Chandelier. I think you get a lot of control over the game with Chandelier. Um, so if I see exactly this guy, I might be tempted to go for him. Uh, for the fighting stuff, I'm super not impressed. I mean, the raw stats on these Machamps are big, like 160 hit points, 150 hit points, uh, 120 for three for no downside and counterattack and Machamp crush and stuff. These are all good, but like, it's all very slow and it feels like you're committed fully to like one Machamp to try and like carry you through the whole game. And I'd rather be doing that with big basics because the amount of big basics in this draft is so insane. So... I don't really care too much for Machamp. Uh, one cool thing, he's even shown it off here, is that one of the Machokes can sort of give you a safeguard against Spread. So if I'm concerned that Spread is being drafted, I could possibly just get a Machoke in there. Um, the Lucarios aren't all that impressive either. Um, this one can draw three, I believe it's draw two cards when you put him into play, but that's not really that good. This Lucario, however, is really good. Stance ability is amazing. You effectively get a free turn to use Submarine Blow. Um, so that could be pretty awesome. Um, but I think you'd have to build around this with like some Devo spray stuff. I haven't checked out all of the items in detail yet. Um, but I would only ever pick this guy if I'd already picked up some, um, Devo spray type shenanigans to build around. Um, <clears throat> some of his basics are good. Uh, Landorus is strong. Terrakian's good. Stunfisk is really good pressure early as is Regirock. So, uh, there are some good early pressure basics from fighting. Um, but I still don't think I'll be drafting much of it. Like if I draft any of it, It'll be like the Terrakion or the Stomfisk or something. I don't see myself drafting fighting overall. I don't think it's that strong. Um, the Karina's a really good card in a vacuum. Focus Sash is really good in a vacuum, but I don't think it's uh, necessarily a build around that I'll go for. I'm pretty sure I'm, like, so far, I'm basically ignoring fighting. And I'm ignoring Infinite, and I'm ignoring Grass outside of, like, some key basics that I've talked about. <clears throat> Dark's interesting. The Hydrogens are pretty powerful. Um, they're all kind of supplementary stage twos. So it kind of fits into that role of me wanting to have a stage two in the background um, and then just using basics to try and attack. Um, there's the Accelerating Hydrogen. It accelerates Dark from the discard pile. So we have Rain Dance, which is the best acceleration, but Hydrogen's not a bad like second place. So if, I, if, if it doesn't come to light that I can use the Lightning stuff, I'll just try and use Hydrogen. Um, Weed Out is insane. Um, whenever you take damage, you can just, like, remove that thing from play and, like, super on it back or whatever. Weed Out is a really, really strong thing, and uh, Dark Destruction is also a very good attack. When you have 160 hit points, this guy is, like, a behemoth. Um, so Hydrogen could be pretty good as an attacking presence if we really need him to. <clears throat> Dark Trance is also pretty cool. Uh, this one, I think, is a bit of a bait unless we're, like, already full on. Like, if we've drafted the other three Hydrogens, maybe we pick this one up, but that's just about it. But I think uh, this, like, these... Yeah, all three of these Hydrogens are good. These are, these are good Hydrogens. This one's like the most crucial one for, for me to pick up. 
because uh, in my mind, I just want to use big basics and have some element of energy acceleration in here. Uh, the Zoroarks are really insane. Uh, obviously, stand-in, mind jack, both things are amazing. Giving yourself easy free retreat pivoting with mind jack being like a check to your opponent's bench size, which is really dirty in cube. Foul play is pretty powerful. Uh, Night punishment surprisingly strong. It's a lot of dark, it's a lot of energy commitment. Uh, but if you have this hydrogen, maybe it's worthwhile. Um, it's like the vengeance style attack from a Flareon. Uh, this Zoroark is a bait. Um, for basics, this Yveltal is amazing. It has free retreat. It can do 30 for one and 60 for two, um, which is both like amazing things with the amount of hit points you have. Um, I think those are really it. Like I, I pick up Oblivion Wing. I'd pick up uh, probably Absol as well. I don't think I'd pick up the Guzzlord. It's a bit of a trap unless we're like all in on the hydrogen style thing. I don't think he has enough control tools uh, to make like a junk hunt resource management style deck work. So I think I ignore Sableye. Um, but in other cubes, he can be completely nuts. Uh, but yeah, the dark stuff is cool. Alter, dark patch, and hydrogen might make me pick up some of this dark stuff. The basics themselves aren't that impressive. But if I pick up some like colorless attackers, maybe hydrogen's the play. So yeah, something to bear in mind. I'm re like the Zoroark will get snapped up immediately. The rest I. I think I can pass up unless it's that energy accelerating hydrogen. Uh, Aegis Clash, I think overall is probably too weak. Uh, it's again one of these like you've got to build all of these to try and make them work. This one's probably the best one. It has Royal Guard, so it minuses 40 done to itself, so it's a bit of a tank. It only does 100 though, so it's not really knocking out even a number of basic Pokemon, so I think it's a bit of a trap. I think overall I'd be amazed to see Aegis Clash actually do well. I think it's definitely an ignore from me. Um, for Bronzong, there's a couple that I really want to keep an eye out for. Uh, Metal Lynx is obviously one. If I can Energy Excel any of these, uh, like I'll always pick up Energy Excel in a cube. Energy Excel is just so integral, strong. Uh, and Pain Amplifier, if I am drafting uh, Greninja or Chandelure, I might try and build Pain Amplifier. I might try and add in Bronzong because Pain Amplifier does a lot of damage. Three to everything that has damage counters on them for two colorless is very, very strong. And with 110 hit points, he's probably tanking to try and do it twice. And then you've probably board cleared everything but their main attacker itself. So that sounds really, really good. I think the heal block and the other one I pretty much ignore. But the Metal Lynx itself is, again, just like one of those picks that you just have to take. It's like Starmie, Salazzle, Bronzong. Those are like the three stage ones that I want to like insta-pick, basically. Oh, and Zoroark, yeah. Uh, for the basics, I think the Dialga and Cabalion. Uh, well, Dialga is probably the strongest here. Um, because it can, again, punish rare candies. It can punish just... It can deny people ever getting their stage 2 out. Um, so it really puts people on a clock with turn back time, and Power Blast is enough to get through most uh, basics as well, which is amazing. Uh, Revenge style attack is fine. Registeel, extra energy acceleration. I think Dialga is like the most impressive one. Uh, Heatran could also be pretty frustrating. So I think I would basically draft just Dialga um, if I was anything... Like if I was just picking in general... Uh, but if I'm Bronzong, I would pick like a bunch of these guys. So yeah, I think overall uh, the metal stuff isn't insane. I would pick Bronzong, mainly just this one. This one if I'm spreading, uh, but Energy Excel in general. If I pick up this guy, sure, maybe I start branching out on some of these other basics. But other than Dialga, none of them stand out to be too amazing. So yeah, that's the types. I think overall, like I'm super impressed by Magnezone. That seems to be far and away the best. Uh, there are some powerful basics here and there, but I think that's like the big build around. I think I'm gonna try, like I'm gonna try and go evolution, energy acceleration with some big basics. So here are some more like colorless big basics that we have. Um, Mr. Mime could be good if I'm expecting spread. Kangaskhan can search out evolutions with its first attack and do 80 and has 130 hit points. So this is a really, this is actually a premium big basic. This guy's really, really good because early game consistency whilst also offering damage output like on turn two, potentially if I have energy excel or if I play DCs, which there are three, I believe in his draft. Uh, that's really good. Uh, Jirachi, bit of a bait, uh, but if you get that escape board, it could be amazing. Uh, Chandler still obviously very good. Dunsparce good. You can see there's not many Call for Family style Pokemon. So like Dunsparce, the Dene, uh, Alolan Volpix. These are ones I'll definitely try and pick up. Snorlax is a trap. Uh, Bumblebee is actually reasonable. This mill tank goes alongside the um, Heracross. is potentially a really, really, really powerful attacker. Ditto is just like an insta pick most of the time. Shining Lugia, a bit of a trap. A little bit expensive. But if I have enough acceleration, I'll still pick him up. Rayquaza is actually like a better Shining Lugia, I think. Uh, Orangaroo is insane, absolutely insane. I'd pick him up in a heartbeat. 
Uh, Deoxy is probably only good if I'm drafting that um, Strange Wave Starmie. Uh, Mew's a nice free retreat pivot. The evolutions are interesting. He only has two energy evolution Eevees. A lot of these ones are crappy, so I basically only care about the evolutions if I draft one or both of these guys. Um, uh, Leafeon, Espeon, Umbreon, and Flareon, these are all like worth noting. Espeon, obviously amazing if I'm building Chandelure or if I'm building Trev, because it could do a 40 snipe and it does apply weakness and resistance as well, so that's absolutely insane. Umbreon doing revenge for 120 for one attachment is just super, uh, super good value, and you can just pay a retreat out the following turn, so that's an amazing attacker. Uh, Leafeon being able to energy crush things is scary if I'm going to be a rain dancer, um, so I might draft it just to deny other people from using it, um, but in general he's relatively strong. And Vengeance could be again like a build round. If you wanna if I wanna build like Zoroark Flareon if I'm feeling super spicy, that could be like a pretty cool like full on Pokemon box style deck. So looking at item cards, um I haven't really like looked over this in too much detail, but from what I'm seeing, it's mostly like modern things. I think the tools are the ones that I'm like most interested in. EXP share, Fury Belt, like if I can draw Fury Belt with big basics, like imagine a Raikou with Fury Belt. He just wins. Like, he just instantly wins the game. Like, whoever gets that combo is going to be so far ahead of everyone else. There is Max Elixir in here, so I have a good opportunity to get a good amount of um, Energy Excel going on. Hustle Belt's an interesting one. Uh, there's Tool Scrapper. There's Field Blower. Baton is absolutely nuts. If you can draft Baton, that's amazing. There's Superior as well, so that's something to note for, uh, for the Energy Acceleration decks. Um, Rescue Scarf and Bodybuilding, those are both amazing. Uh, Floatstone is in here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe there's, yeah, there's four rare candies. So, like I said, I mean, I don't, I rarely draft rare candy myself. Unless I was to draft, like, Karina or anything like that. Uh, I'm not that fussed about rare candies, especially because I'll probably just be trying to smash with a basic on, like, turn two or three anyway. I'll probably just start loading up a powerful basic as quickly as I can and then just let the stage twos kind of come unless I am very focused on like Greninja or something. I don't think I'll be drafting candies. It's just my own play style. Um, there's not too much else here that's all that important. I think uh, Max Potion is obviously very good. Uh, muscle Band. There's not a lot of uh, Pokemon recovery from what I'm seeing. What Pokemon recovery have we got? We've got Buddy Buddy Rescue. We've got Stretcher, Super Rod, Buddy Buddy. So yeah, I, I really need to be... Oh, there's Sacred Ash as well. Okay, so recovering Pokemon will be premium. If I'm trying to go basics, Pokemon recovery is something I definitely need to value high. I don't think I can ever pass up Pokemon recovery unless it's Sacred Ash, because that's like the worst one. Okay, good to know. There are A specs in here. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in theory, everyone will get one, uh, unless you draft to counterpick people. Um, I think Life Do is probably the worst one here. Um, Scramble, Scoop Up Cyclone, and Gold Potion are actually probably the, some of the strongest. Uh, Master Ball, Dowsing, and Comp Search are all very, very good. But Scoop Up Cyclone and Gold Potion actually like are like serious game changers if you can get them to work. So yeah, good stuff to bear in mind there. Supporter cards, I mean, just gauging a general level of supporters. I think there's a good amount of... Well, there's a good split between like draw supporters and disruption. Uh, delinquents one that I'm pretty scared of. I'll have to try and play around play around that in the first few rounds until I know who's playing delinquent. Um, but it looks like in general there's a lot of good like supporters that just help us draw cards. There are a few disruption ones. There's skull grunt in here. There's a few others, but nothing all that scary. Faber and Zerosic, I think, are both here. There's also Getsis, so. Trying to play our hand proactively is probably going to be rewarded. There's a handiwork as well. So there actually is a good amount of like disruption style supporters. Um, but I don't think there's a, like enough tanking strategy in general to actually work. Kiawe is super scary if you want to have a big basic with a Kiawe going straight onto it. Um, there's a trump card, which is interesting. But yeah, it looks like there's a good amount of... So there's Fisherman, Lady, and Sillen. So there's a lot of energy finding and recovering pieces so it really really feels like magnezone is like by far and away the best stage two for whoever drafts that uh for stadiums there's nothing too scary rough seas would be amazing to draft if you're magnezone like that's just so insane if you get it um also viridian would be amazing special energy nothing too important to look at 
uh, the three DCs are something that I'll try and pick up along the way. But yeah, that's an insight into the cube um, that I'm going to be playing. You can see he's done this awesome uh, little drafter thing where he's posted his he's pasted his entire cube into this thing. And then he has a drafting table for everyone. You can see my name's even down here. These are the six people that I think we're drafting with. And uh, essentially, you like pick one of these, and then you, uh, I can't remember what you do, but you then like pass it on to the next person. So you can see everyone's got like a fake starting pack going on here. This isn't going to be like what we draft from immediately. It'll be like re-randomized and stuff. But yeah, absolutely awesome uh, to try this out. Um, I really want this to work. Uh, because then I will try and do this. I'll try and import like my cube data into one of these and try and get this going because I absolutely love cube and every aspect of it. You can see that I'm going to try hard in this uh, in this draft. I've already got my TCG1 account ready to go. Uh, I've revived it from like six years ago or something stupid. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, really excited to test out his cube. Uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for some powerful basics. Salazzle uh, being an Impressive stage one, Starmies, both are good. This uh, Electro is really important. Uh, Chandelier, I could get lured into playing this deck. I, I love playing Chandelier because it gives you so much control because you place counters wherever you want to. I'm basically ignoring fighting. Um, Hydrogen I could be convinced on. Bronzong and then some of his basics. And then basically I'm, I'm on the lookout for big basics and trying to make them powered up. I think if I draft uh, Magnazone, I basically just know I'm going to do really, really well. <laughs> like, if you draft just Magnazone and then, like, maybe, like, four or five of the big basics, like, if you just draft, like, Raikou, Raikou, and then, like, even if it's just, like, Kangaskhan from then on, like, I think you just win. I, I don't see how you don't. As long as you draft uh, some energy, some Pokemon recovery and energy recovery, you're just going to have a really good day. So, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how this draft works. Draft 80 cards, 60 card decks, then round robin. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little insight into me analyzing the cube. Um, I will be drafting tomorrow, and then I'll be posting my uh, draft tomorrow. I'll be, I think I'll be in a call with all the guys, so I don't know if I can really go through my mentality. So I did this video to sort of give you the mentality of what I'm looking for uh, throughout the draft. Um, so yeah, that's going to be what's really on my mind. One quick thing I want to look at for special energies is how many multi-type special energies there are. Yeah, there's a good amount of multi-type special energies. I really like picking these sorts of things because I'm probably going to be playing a slew of different uh, big basics. So yeah, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. Yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think about my uh, little discussion into the draft and looking at the power level of things. Um, uh, what would you be drafting and what do you think is the most interesting stuff? Um, I wonder how you break down cubes. Do you start looking at the trainers first? Do you look at uh, what sort of support they all have? It looks like from a standpoint he's tried to make, he's tried to have a good split of like specific type support and then just like general draw supporters down at the bottom as well. So looks like he's got everything figured out. I hope that Sam's cube is going to be interesting. And yeah, I'll be showing off my draft itself and all those battles that I have as well. It will be over on TCG1, which is a bit clunky and a lot of people don't like it compared to PTCGO. It's not quite as fluid and nice to watch, but... Um, I think it'll be definitely interesting in a different video, a different little series for you guys to all enjoy. So hope you did, and uh, I'll be back with another cute video tomorrow. Cheers.